Yes, Ria Jane, uh, thank you so much for joining us at the Storytelling by and for Adults session here on Monday, August 1, 2022. Please tell us where you're telling from. Tell us about your work uh, and, and uh, tell us the title of your story and, and please tell us a story. Thank you so much, Eric, for this opportunity. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Ria from Noida, India. And uh, I have been a storyteller for somewhere around eight, nine years. And uh, frankly, my it was my daughter who uh, got me into this field. Like there was, I was looking for some interesting uh, class for her. And uh, I saw this... Uh, um, um, an ad of a storyteller. So it really fascinated me. So I called her up and just over the phone, uh, she was like, uh, you know, I really like your voice and the way we are conversing. Would you like to join me? I was not looking for any kind of work. So I said, yeah, sure. Why not? It's, uh, you know, it's telling stories. I would love to join you. And then hence started my journey. Um, it was really nice working with the, with my mentor Simi and uh, later on I also uh, right currently I'm working with a story group by the name of Story Ghar so and I'm also a pre-primary primary school teacher I love connecting communicating with children although my daughter has grown up she's 15 now but uh, storytelling keeps me connected to uh, children so yeah that's about me today I have brought a story, uh, a folk tale from Ethiopia for you. That is the woodcutter of Gura. So one sunny morning, a woodcutter of Gura set out to get some firewood. He walked across the plain until he came to a big olive tree by the river. He climbed the tree, watched himself, at the end of the largest branch. <laughs> then he made himself comfortable, swung his axe, and began to cut the branch on which he was sitting. The village priest, who was passing by, looked up. Hey, brother, what are you doing? That's no way to chop the wood. The cutter looked at the priest and said, what other way is there, sir? You want the wood? Lift up your axe and keep going. Chop, chop, chop. The priest said, but you were sitting at the end of the branch and chopping it right in the middle. The branch will break and when it does, you know what will happen? You will fall down and die. But do you think the woodcutter listened to him. No, the woodcutter thought that the priest was joking. In any case, he was very stubborn and lazy and he didn't bother to get up from there or change his position. So the priest just shook his head and walked away. And the woodcutter sat exactly where he was sitting and went chop, chop, chop. Suddenly, there was a loud crack and down crashed the branch, the man and the axe. As he laid on the ground, he weathered. His whole body was aching everywhere. Ugh. The woodcutter remembered his conversation with the priest. The priest had said three things. That the branch would break, I will fall down and be killed. I guess the priest was a wise man. And the branch broke, I fell, and surely I'm dead. The priest was right. And it didn't take long for the woodcutter to convince himself that he was really dead. So he just closed his eyes and laid on the ground without moving. After a while, 
his friends came and called out to his name. But the woodcutter lay perfectly still. Why? Because he had convinced himself that he was dead. His friend's shoe came, splashed some water on his face. But the woodcutter didn't speak or move at all. They tried to make him stand, lift his body up. But the woodcutter thought, surely a dead man can't stand up. And he fell down again. Now his friends were too convinced that he was dead. So they lifted him up and began to carry him back to the village. Woodcutter shouted, oh, my friends, pick up my axe. So, and they did pick up. Soon they came to the fork of the path and there they stopped. Should we turn right? or left. The friends stood there and began fighting and arguing amongst each other. The woodcutter got so irritated, he sat up and pointed in the right direct direction. Then he lay down and shut his eyes again. And his friends carried him to the village saying, ah, what a clever man. He always knew answers to everything. What a pity he is dead. Soon they reached the woodcutter's house, but found no one at home. So they put him on the floor and began to argue what should be done next. Woodcutter was again irritated. He said, send for my wife, of course. Right away, brother, who would have thought that a dead man could come up with such clever ideas? Hmm. And they promptly sent for his wife. <laughs> Sobbing and wailing, oh, my dear husband. The woodcutter's wife appeared and there were some villagers along with her. The friends told the wife, a branch fell on him and killed him. No, 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 said the woodcutter. How many times do I tell you? I was sitting on the branch. It broke, fell, and I died. But my husband is talking. How can he be dead? What happened to him? Cried the woodcutter's wife. How, what, when, woman, it's not respectful to ask the dead these kind of questions. You know he's dead. <laughs> the woodcutter's wife said, I tell you he isn't dead. Just use your brains. He's talking right here. The woodcutter was getting irritated again. The wise priest told me, that the branch would break and I will surely fall down. And do you know what? The branch did break and I fell. The priest was speaking the truth. So I'm surely dead. Now again the wife said, nonsense. Did the, wife, did the priest see you falling down? No, right? All right. Nag, 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 said the woodcutter. You can only nag me. He got up from the ground, picked up his axe and went out of the house. The wife asked, where are you going, husband? To get some firewood so that you can cook dinner. His friend said, what a fine man. Even when he was dead, he didn't forget his duty. So, my story ends here. And as they say, that a fool always finds one still more foolish to admire him. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. What?
what do you really love about that story? What what uh, what attracted you to it? What what part of the story do you really connect with? And the very lightness of the story, because uh, very frankly, you know, these days we are all surrounded with so many uh, questions. I mean, at least around me, I feel, you know. So I was definitely looking for a very light story, uh, which would bring smile and which would make everybody smile and laugh. And uh, connecting, I feel that, yes, uh, sometime or the other in our life, we surely... Uh, do act foolish and we surely do find some people around us to uh, believe in us. I mean, we all cannot be right every time. So yeah, I believe that. And and in in just to review, in in what were the primary ways that, that he was foolish? The woodcutter? Yeah. The primary way that he was foolish was that uh, uh, he was sitting on the branch, the very branch which he was cutting, and he did get a warning from the priest also. Still, he did not bother to get up from the branch and shift his place. He did get a warning. Mm -hmm. And did he finally cut the branch? Yes, he did cut the branch. He fell down and he thought that the priest was right. I'm surely dead. While he was not dead. <laughs> he just oh, believed. Right. He wasn't priest. sure if he was dead or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was mm -hmm. just making the, because he believed he is dead. He thought that the priest had said, the branch will fall, I will fall, and I'll be dead. So in his head, he believed that he's dead and he was all out to make people believe, believe in him. And yes, he did find some friends who believed in him, mm -hmm. but his wife didn't. Mm hmm Okay. Anybody? Any thoughts? Comments? Questions? Observations? Have you ever been foolish in a similar way? I can't think of anything uh, right now. I'm I sure do. I have been. Gustavo? I, I believe that Everybody is foolish in some time in life. The fact is that no difficult to acknowledge that and say it and, and discuss it <laughs> because I don't know one feels bad, <laughs> but uh, it's true, and that's it's a nice way to say it. <laughs> I completely agree with you, Gustavo. It, it is very hard to admit that. Yes, I was foolish, or yes, I was in fact wrong. Mm -hmm. I guess being foolish often involves um, the misapplying one's knowledge, you know, not understanding the right time and place to apply a certain understanding or knowledge. So we, we are fooled. Uh, into behaving out of out of place, out of you know, in a way that doesn't make sense. Yeah, but uh, you know, sometimes it's okay to be foolish. Sometimes it's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as one is sincere and authentic. Uh, in fairy tales, it, it often works out for the foolish person, as long as they're kind and, and uh, sincere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. Mm -hmm. Okay.